With the Dallas Mavericks pulling off a shocking upset on the 64-win Phoenix Suns, they're set to face off against the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals. This video will break down the strengths and weaknesses of each team, the players who need to step up, the keys to success for both teams, and my final prediction. Now let's get started. One of the biggest strengths of the Warriors is their multiple elite scoring options. Golden State has a bunch of players that can get hot at any given moment and take over games. Jordan Poole has emerged as a third splash brother behind Stephen Clay. Despite playing in the first playoffs of his career, Poole has often looked like a star. He has come down to earth since the Nuggets series, but he's still averaging 19 points and 5 assists per game, while shooting a very efficient 50% from the field and 39% from 3. Steph started off the playoffs coming off the bench because of his foot sprain, but after he exploded for 33 points in Game 4 versus the Nuggets, he's returned to the starting lineup and he's been dominant ever since. He went off for 29 points and 5 assists to close out the Grizzlies in Game 6. And in Game 6, Clay was also at the top of his game, dropping 30 points on 50% shooting to end the Grizzlies season. In the playoffs, he's also been excellent, averaging 20 points per game while shooting 45% and 41% from deep so far in the postseason. This three-headed monster that the Warriors have between Steph, Clay, and Poole is flat out unfair for opponents. And to add insult to injury, the Warriors also have Andrew Wiggins, who was a first-time All-Star this year. Now his scoring has been down in the playoffs, but he's been good as a complimentary scorer and he's more than capable of getting hot and having a big game. In the closeout game against Memphis, he also was a big contributor, finishing with 18 points and 11 rebounds. The next strength we'll talk about is the Warriors' elite ball movement. Despite having this incredible combination of talent, the ball never sticks with one player. The Warriors play very unselfishly as a team. They're constantly swinging the ball around, sacrificing good shots for great shots, which is why they currently lead all teams in the playoffs in assists per game. This is why the Warriors' success on offense can't just be attributed to their talent, as their superb ball movement is also a huge part of what makes their offense so great. The last strength we'll discuss is the Warriors' incredible defense. Losing Gary Payton was definitely a significant blow, but even without him, the Warriors are great defensively. Draymond Green is consistently one of the best defensive anchors in the league, and the Warriors have other great defensive talents like Andrew Wiggins and Kevon Looney. And just like on offense, the Warriors play with excellent teamwork, which is a huge reason their team defense is so great. Now let's talk about weaknesses. The Warriors don't have many, but they do have a lack of size as they don't play with anyone over 6'10". Kevon Looney is an undersized big at just 6'9", but in the closeout game against Memphis, he had a big presence on the glass, finishing the game with 22 boards. If Looney can continue to put in that type of work on the glass, this will make the Warriors even more of a tough out. Now let's talk about the Mavericks. One of their biggest strengths has been their elite guard play. This is of course led by their superstar Luka Doncic. Luka has been historically great in the postseason. No player in NBA history had averaged 36-6 and six in their playoff career, yet Luka is averaging 33-9-9 and nine in the playoffs. Despite going up against one of the best defensive teams in the league, Luka toyed with Suns defenders like it was child's play, generating tons of efficient shots for himself and his teammates. In the closeout game against Phoenix, Luka dropped 35 points. Luka continues to show that the bigger the game, the better he's going to play. But as great as Luka has been in the playoffs, he hasn't been alone. The 6-foot Jalen Brunson has played like an all-star in the postseason, averaging 23 points and 4 assists per game. He dominated against Utah, struggled early in the Sun series, but has played extremely well to help the Mavs close the Suns out. This is incredible for a player who was averaging just 12 points per game for the Mavs last year. In order for Jalen Brunson to break out this season, he had to get in the gym and work on his game. If you also want to improve yourself like Jalen Brunson, then you need to join Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. As a YouTuber, I'm always trying to improve my skills, so I joined Skillshare to learn to make better thumbnails. I love Ronnie Hermosa's class on how to use Canva. 
His course taught me some strategies on how to create irresistible thumbnails and clearly this thumbnail came out well since you guys decided to click on it. Say you want to become a software engineer, Skillshare has classes on coding. Point is, Skillshare has tons of courses in a wide range of categories. The first 1000 people to use the link in my description box or my code will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, so don't wait. Skillshare is the place to be if you want to invest in yourself and grow your career or business. Another strength of the Mavericks is their excellent three-point shooting. So far, the Mavericks are leading all playoff teams in three-pointers made, and they rank third in three-point percentage at 38%. The Mavericks have several knockdown shooters that have been capitalizing off the open looks created by Luka and Jalen Brunson's penetration. Reggie Bullock, in particular, has been an absolute sniper. He only hit 36% from three in the regular season, but in the playoffs, he's hitting 39% from three on seven attempts per game. Maxi Kleber, Davis Bertans, and Dorian Finney-Smith are also doing plenty of damage for the Mavericks from downtown. And lastly, just like the Warriors, the Mavericks are great defensively. The Mavericks were one of the best defensive teams in the regular season, ranking six in defensive efficiency, and their elite defense has played a huge role in them getting to the conference finals. In particular, the Mavericks' great perimeter defenders have played a huge role in them getting this far. Dorian Finney-Smith and Reggie Bullock did an amazing job hounding Chris Paul and Devin Booker, and even former Nick Frank Nilakina is having an impact on the defensive end. The excellent defense was on full display in Game 7, where the Mavs held the Suns to just 90 points on 38% shooting. In terms of weaknesses, just like the Warriors, the Mavericks tend to lack size. Outside of Dwight Powell, the Mavs don't have anyone else over 6'10", and as a result, they're ranked second to last in team rebounds in the playoffs. This lack of team rebounding tends to lead to them giving up offensive rebounds and second chance opportunities. Now for the players that need to step up for both teams. For the Mavericks, I look at Spencer Dinwiddie as the player who needs to step up the most. Dinwiddie looked excellent in the Mavericks closeout game against the Suns, finishing with 30 points, but they're going to need that version of him more consistently against the Golden State Warriors. I expect Luka and Jalen Brunson to bring it as they both have been excellent in the playoffs, but Dinwiddie could be the main X factor that decides if the Mavs can pull off this upset. For the Warriors, I look at Jordan Poole as the one that needs to step up the most. Poole has been great overall in the playoffs, but he has struggled towards the end of the Grizzlies series. Poole is only averaging 10 points per game on 27% shooting from the field and 17% from three in the last three games of the Memphis series. The Warriors are going to need Poole to regain his rhythm and beat that elite spark plug off the bench in this upcoming series. Now for the keys to success for both teams. The key for the Warriors will be trying to slow down Luka. Luka has proven that he's simply too good to let him go one-on-one. -on -one. How the Warriors approach him defensively will be interesting. The Dubs can send him plenty of traps and double teams to force him to give the ball up, but Luka's teammates are more than capable of hitting the open looks, but oftentimes in the playoffs, it's better to force the role players to beat you than to let the opposing team superstar get hot. For the Mavs, their key to success is containing the Warriors' incredible guard trio of Steph, Clay, and Poole. This trio of the Warriors has been absolutely on fire through two rounds in the playoffs, but if the Mavs want to pull off this upset, they'll need to slow them down. Fortunately, the Mavs have very good perimeter defense, and they did a damn good job defending Devin Booker and Chris Paul. It won't be an easy task, but if they can slow this splash trio down, it'll help them to pull off this upset. Ultimately, I believe this will be an amazing series. The Mavericks have the best player in this series in Luka, but the Warriors are overall more talent, but either way, this series will be very close. I think the Golden State Warriors will defeat the Mavericks in a tough 7 games. Anyway guys, that's going to be the end of the video. Who do you think is going to win this series and in how many games? Tell me in the comments. If you enjoyed this analysis and want to see more dope content, just like it. Drop a like on the video and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.